What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today we're back looking at the robots and in the last video I realized the robot video was kind of a little bit confusing. It was really just a lot of technical stuff and we didn't get a lot of time to look at what the robot can actually do. I spent a lot of time setting up the circuits and I didn't really actually program anything into the robot, nothing special. So I took a look at your comments and I noticed the one comment a lot of people had was to have the robot place blocks and make stuff. And I decided to do that with this episode. And so we haven't really built anything new, but I've gone ahead and written a couple of different programs into this robot. And you can see we've got two identical control boards here, but we're only using one of them at a time. So you can see the remote control for the robot is all painted white. And all we gotta do is paint these transmitters white here to run this program. And we can paint these ones right to run this program. And then, you know, remove this one from the queue. So all we've done really is taken our initial robot. You can see we've got the same four axis robot as before and it ends here. But then I've added this sort of weird manipulator piece on the end. So it uses that modded block spawner from the mod pack as well as has its own receiver on it on channel four. So we've got a, another receiver there as well. And this receiver will tell it to spawn a block. Now it spawns a crate. So we've got a purple little number block here and a black number block here and those just give the spawner its parameters so the purple block lines up the crate to be centered on the spawning block and the black gives the id for it to spawn the crate so you can see if we take the robot we've got it hooked into this control board so we'll just enable manual control mode and uh, we'll move it just out uh you know let's go the other direction let's go this way here perfect so let's go over to there just so we can see it and we'll bring it up in the z axis and uh, there we go, nice height there, a five. And we've got this special function S. So now the special function has been wired in through this board. You can see we've got X, Y, Z, R, Z, and then S as well. So we've got that S function wired in, and that just goes through this sort of little tick button blip, which then sends a single tick blip through this remote control down to there to spawn a crate. So if we actually give it a point where S equals one, you can see it spawns that there. And then if we set S to zero again, it doesn't spawn it. If we set S to one again, it'll spawn a second one. And so that might seem a little bit weird, but what you do is you have a point at each point for the robot. So the robot moves to the position and then you have it repeat the same position, but give it an S equals one value. It'll then spawn a block and then you have it move on to the next step. So really, really cool stuff. And uh, of course we could change this spawner. You can see we're using ID 108 for that crate, but we could of course change it to be any other ID. So I've written a few programs here. Uh, there's not much to it other than that in this episode. It's a very, very sort of quick episode, I guess. I mean, the robot's pretty much the same as what we saw in the last episode. I haven't changed that really any except for that spawning block, but I've written a few programs. So this one is a really basic program here that builds a wall. And then this program is just a little bit cooler. So we'll take a look at these programs first. We'll run them so you guys can see just how cool this stuff is. The problem with this is the fact that when you spawn too many blocks, especially close to each other, they do start to lag a bit. So you can see we've actually actually got these two platforms completely disconnected from each other which helps a lot with the lag and we've got the robot platform welded to the ground so it helps a lot if you have this platform welded to one of these it starts to get a little bit glitchy a little bit weird I think there's just a lot of logic connections and they're all kind of together but anyways we'll run this program uh, so we're at memory index zero that's good uh, we'll hit the blue switch so now we're running in memory mode and uh, we'll hit that green timer and we'll watch this program go so you can see it just goes, goes to the position, then spawns the block, goes to the position, spawns the block, position, spawns the block. And this is all pre-programmed in. This is like having a controller, but a really, really crazy controller. And it's a proper robot. It's going to XYZ positions. It's spotting the blocks. And it'll repeat this every time. No matter how many times we run this program, it goes to the exact same spot every time. And it works every time. And then you can see there, the robot's done. We've programmed it to go back behind the wall and sit in this. This is like the epic Fortnite robot here. It basically builds its own walls. And uh, it's just absolutely amazing. So we can, of course, delete all these and bring them all back away. If you run the program again with another wall, you know what? Let's, let's run it twice just so you guys can see what happens. It's so stupid, it will knock those blocks out of the way and spawn new ones. Like, these robots are actual robots. They don't do any sort of pre-thinking. So we've just reset that to memory zero. It automatically starts running again because we've got that green switch up. So you can see the completely dumb robot. There's no sensors on it. There's nothing. It's literally going through the coordinates we've told it to. And it's just going to keep repeating that task over and over again. So you can see it'll do the same wall every time, same pattern, same direction, absolutely everything. Now you could put sensors on the robot, have those sensors feed into the memory values and do different things or run different programs. We could have 
two different programs on two different memory panels that feed into one set of values. You can see all these values are pluses. So we could have 20 of these memory storage panels hooked into one of these. And as long as only one program is running at a time, they won't conflict with each other. So maybe in another episode, I'll program that. And uh, I do want to build a different robot. This robot's great, but I do want to build a bigger one that has more control as well. But regardless, we could have as many programs as we want hooked into as many different individual robot controllers as we want and just have awesome endless possibilities, which is just absolutely fantastic. So let's run the same program again. Uh, again, we'll just paint this white, reset it, puts it back to zero, and you'll see it's just, it, it, like, it can't spawn them because, you know, if there's a block in the way, it won't actually spawn a new one. You can force that, I believe, with the spawner. Uh, it might start spawning. Yeah, it's gonna spawn them on top here. This is good. Okay, it's gonna... Oh, that one actually stayed. Holy... Okay, no, that one didn't. Oh, perfect. It was good. Nice wall. And it's not... Now you can see the collisions are starting to... The more collisions, the more this robot likes to, like, freak out. But you can see, it's still not too bad. And really, really cool stuff. But like I said, the dumbest robots you'll ever see. But just absolutely awesome. I absolutely love this kind of robotics. It requires the programmer to actually, you know, think about all the different things. And with this setup, we can definitely get into more complicated programs. Stuff where we've got one robot that takes a sensor input, does something, and then takes a different sensor input and does something completely different. Again, just by having multiple program boards hooked into the same running thing. Now, because of the way these scripts work in the mod pack, uh, you can't actually have two of the same transmitter on the same map. You'll do some weird stuff. You can have as many of the same receivers. So these ones here, you can see they're all receiving the signal on the white channel. But we can't have two of the same transmitters. So to do that, we just have to make these ones all orange. And uh, right now they're conflicting with these ones. But now we'll paint these ones white. And now we can run this program. But like I said, if you wanted to have multiple programs with one set of transmitter and you didn't want to have to switch them, we could just weld this to this wire them all up into here and then depending on which switches we have activated we could do all that and of course these aren't really switches they're just simply or gates so you could have this gate here hooked into whatever you want to actually run the sequence i made this a super modular setup and uh, maybe in another episode i'll show you guys like a, an automated assembly line type thing maybe like a pick and place operation where we've got a robot sitting at a line we've got a bunch of blocks coming down and it'll pick the blocks off depending on some parameter or something like that just to show you guys how we can have multiple programs set up on the same robot but regardless we're gonna run this program now this is my favorite we'll just move it over to here and uh it's kind of good enough blue switch on and it should be in the rest position perfect and green here we go this is my favorite this took so long to do guys but i absolutely love it i think it's great this is what happens when you offend the robot he gets really mad he's like listen i'm not a simple robot i know what i'm doing and i'm gonna build myself a little house and he's now building himself a beautiful little house you can see he's very good at it he's a very skilled construction worker now, we could speed up these time steps a little bit. You'll notice it kind of waits when it gets to each position before it uh, spawns the box. We could have sped that up just a little bit more if we wanted to. Uh, but I decided to leave it with a little bit of lag time in case it screws up its movement somehow. Although, it really doesn't. It's kind of, it does the same every time. So here we go. You see the game is going to start to lag a little bit more uh, as we get more and more blocks kind of all spawn on top of each other. It's not bad, but the frame rate's dropping with every new block. You can see now it's getting... A little bit worse and it will kind of stabilize once all the blocks rest but they are all free floating objects and this is why the sort of 3d printing robot doesn't really work but you can see it's built himself a little house and then he hides in his little house and we can't see the robot and if we wait just a little bit we should get our frames back maybe once these objects settle no no we're just we're not going to get the frames back sometimes we do sometimes you don't regardless we can just delete all these so i stopped making the house originally i wanted to make it taller but uh, of course, the frame rate kind of kills it. But it's really, really cool. So it's a very, very simple program. And uh, it just builds a house. And I absolutely love it. And I am definitely going to be making more robots. And I'm definitely going to be programming more of them. I haven't uploaded this to the workshop yet. Uh, I do want to make some changes to this board. As I've been recording programs on these boards, there's some things that I've come across which I think would be uh, much better to have changed. But they're not bad. For example, we can turn off the timestamp. And we can actually step it through the program if we want. And you can see we can manually step it through. So that's really great. Really, really convenient system. But there's some things that I found were a real big pain to deal with. For example, it wouldn't remember the last position. So you can see when you're recording positions, you have to put it in this sort of yellow mode. And if you had a position, let's say this position 7. You can see the robot's in some position there. 
but we don't actually know what that is. It, it doesn't output that. So it would be nice to have that as well. And I think I do need to make a few changes to this board. So I'm definitely going to upload it at some point in time. But I do want to change just a few things about how this works before I do that. And of course, I think I want to make another demo with a robot that does some multiple programs all at the same time. But let's run this again. Really, really cool stuff. I absolutely love these programs, guys. And it takes so long to set one of these up because you have to pre-record every individual position and you can see it rotates the hand to rotate the cube so it rotates 90 degrees there then it rotates another 90 degrees to keep spotting them in this perfect sort of grid pattern and then again 90 degrees but it's absolutely awesome this is so cool this robotic stuff and uh it's just great i love this stuff this is why i got into this sort of uh thing in the first place and it's just absolutely amazing i love the way that you can program a robot using some XYZ coordinates, but you can have it doing, you know, I mean, a pretty repetitive task, I guess, but it'll do it every time and it'll do it the same every time. And it's absolutely awesome that Scrap Mechanic allows us to make creations like this. But of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This was a great suggestion to add a spawning block to the end of the robot. I absolutely love it. I think it's great. Uh, you can see the lag does get really, really bad, but it's just so cool. And then it just hides itself. Look at that. He's just, he's just a little, he's made himself a little house. Oh, there we go. We got our frames back. Look at that. Perfect. It's got himself a nice little house. We've got our frame rate. It's just absolutely amazing. I definitely want to make a few more robotics projects. I definitely want to do some really crazy stuff, but uh, I definitely want to hear your guys' ideas as well. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. We're going to watch this thing run again because I think it's absolutely awesome. I just I just love watching it build its little house. It's so cool. And I, I want to program a few more ridiculous robots. I definitely want to get into some robots that do stuff based on sensor inputs and don't just do stuff based on, you know, a pre-programmed position. There'll still be programmed positions, but have some sensor inputs that can adjust those patterns. And I think that will be absolutely phenomenal. All right, so we've got our robot just finishing up its little house here. Just absolutely perfect. Making himself a, a nice little, little structure there. Nice little place to hide out. But uh, just super cool. And you can see it's super consistent. I mean, sometimes the crates... They don't line up perfectly just because of the way they fall, but uh, it's still a pretty consistent build every time, and we've stacked ourselves a nice little wall of crates. But of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. While you're at it, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.